Well, greetings and welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ here in downtown Wausau, Wisconsin. During the course of the last several months, I've been doing something called Pastor's Ponderings. Just simply things I've been thinking about, particularly as I, I watch the news and experience culture of the day. And sometimes those things make me think of theological perspectives and spiritual ideas and kind of even just questioning the ways of life. Well, watching the news as a light late has been a little bit difficult, but there's been no question about it. And I don't really know how to explain all the ins and outs, the goods and the bads, and all the things that happen in life. But I will say one thing, and I've said this before. I do believe if there's a black, there's a white, if there's a hot, there's a cold, if there's a good, if there's an evil, if there's a God, there's a devil. And I do believe that God is all empowering and all encompassing and all things work for the good. But I do also believe that the devil likes to throw in the monkey wrench every single time that the devil gets the chance to do so. Well, that leads me to a reading today that I'd like to share with you. And this reading comes from Mark. And it's from Mark 1. And I'm going to start it out with verse 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, they entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at Jesus' teachings, for he taught them as having authority and not as a scribe. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit who cried out, What have you done to us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit came out, crying with a loud voice. They were all amazed. And they kept asking one another, What is this, a new teaching, a new authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his frame began to spread, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. That ends my lesson today, but it does make me wonder, and it does make me think about exactly what an unclean spirit may or may not be. I think that all of us can remember in our recent history at a really amazing woman by the name of Mother Teresa, a true saint. No one could ever question or doubt that. That's why I was absolutely startled when I read a recent article in a book that was published shortly after her death. And according to this source, the Archbishop of Calcutta ordered an exorcism performed on Mother Teresa shortly before she died. Here is one of the most dedicated servants of Jesus Christ that I've ever been aware of, and yet an exorcism was ordered before her death. Well, first of all, I need to tell you that I'm surprised to hear that exorcisms are still even being performed in a modern world. But according to the same source, there are over 10 exorcist stations here in the United States, and there are 300 in India and in Italy alone. Interesting fact. Now the reason I'm surprised about that in this day and age is that we've been come to attributing calamities and disorders and mental health issues as simply that. Mental health issues, not demon possession. 
The remedy, according to our modern mindset, is not an exorcism, but counseling and medication and, and professional psychology. All, all, all those come into play. But perhaps I shouldn't be surprised. Possession by demons is hardly anything new. And it was a way to explain things in the old world. I mean, that was before psychologists and psychiatrists and neurologists and all, all the things that we now know in modern vernacular. You know, it's like the opening in the Broadway musical Wicked. The good witch Gilda is asked a serious question by a resident of Oz, Glenda, why does wickedness happen? That's a very good question. Every single one of us, at some time in our life or the other, has been confronted with a problem and the emotions that overwhelm us. Remember, as a kid, Ma, he stole my, well, we can fill in the blank with whatever it is. But from little on, we're balancing off good and evil, what we, what we consider to be right and wrong. There have been times in every one of our lives when emotionally we've been to the end of our rope and we're right at the cliff and ready to bang break, and we know it. You've experienced it, and so have I. What comfort it is to know, then, that we have a friend in Jesus Christ who can help to heal our brokenness of any kind, be it physical or emotional or, or spiritual, if we would only let him Charles Ketling, the famous research scientist, has said, did you ever stop to think what an incurable disease is? It is the one that the doctor doesn't know how to cure. Cancer researchers at King's College Hospital in London did a long-term study of 57 breast cancer victims who have had mastectomies. They found that seven out of the 10 women with a fighting spirit were alive and well 10 years later. While four of the women who felt hopeless at their diagnosis had died. The Health Harborview Medical Center in Seattle is researching the same field. And their findings are supporting exactly what King's College Hospital found. A two-year study of burn victims found that patients with a positive attitude recovered more quickly than the negative ones. What is the biggest issue that you're having today? Is it a positive issue? Is it a negative issue? I think the issue is, do we truly trust God? There is no question that our mental state can affect the ability to change our minds, to heal our bodies, and to provide emotions of healing. Actively engaged in the church's healing ministry often cite such factors as hatred, and envy, and resentment, and especially unforgiveness as the greatest obstacle to physical and spiritual healing. Now this poor man in the synagogue was tormented of spirit. Maybe by demons, maybe it was just feelings of hatred or envy or resentment or who knows, guilt. Jesus saw this man who needed help, and he gave him the help 
just as he's done for millions of others millions of times. As I started out in the beginning, I believe that there's a black and there's a white. There's a hot and there's a cold. There's a good and there's an evil. There's a devil and there is God. The devil is constantly trying to mess up your life. I've said this before, I'll say it a million times again. God does not cause cancer. God does not cause accidents. God does not cause the divorce. God does not cause any of the bad things that happen in your life. And when someone says, well, God is just testing you and wouldn't give you more than you could possibly handle. I gotta tell you, I think that's nonsense. For it's not God who gives you those things. It's the devil. It's the evil side of things that is constantly making the bad things happen. And God's going, whew, good grief. What am I going to do to fix that now? And time and time and time again, God puts just the right people in just the right places at just the right moment to help you along the road. To make matters worse. Culture and society are feeding the evil. There's an old story about a good wolf and a bad wolf. Which wolf gains the most power? The one you feed. In culture and society today, I'm afraid we're feeding the bad wolf who grows stronger and stronger and stronger. But I will guarantee you one thing in the end, God will prevail. God will win this war. God will show is love, which crimes over at evil every single time. So when those bad things happen to you, don't say, God, why could you do this to me? It's not God who did it. It's that evil side of things that's testing you, that's trying you, that's trying to take you away from God. Have a solid foundation in your faith. Don't allow the bad things to jar you. Instead, give your life to prayer. Give your life to God, and I will absolutely guarantee you that God will help you through, walk you through, and even carry you through if God has to. Where it ends, that only God knows. But I know that all things work together for good for those who love God. So, whatever is happening in the news today, whatever is happening in your personal life, whatever you think may be going completely haywire, give it over to God, for you will be in God's loving embrace. Be with me for a moment of prayer, because that was a lot of pondering today. Wondrous God, we know that the bad things do happen in life, we also know that a lot of people blame you when they do. May we know that you are not the reason that those negative things happen, but through you we can find peace. Amen. Thanks for sharing with me today, and thanks for joining with me today. Um, blessings. Take care.